quickly. Now, while I've been chatting away, I hadn't noticed that drip. So definitely want to lose that. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike, and this is the Sunday Art Show. In this week's video, I want to kind of progress an idea that I came up with the other week. You may remember, if you watch the channel regularly, you may remember that I converted this little plein air Sharpie sketch of a horse grazing into this rather colourful little painting, uh, you know, lots of vibrant purple. And then I've got a rather subdued background. And the idea with this background, these vertical stripes, actually represented in a very, very, you know, abstract, simplified way, the background landscape turned on its side. So I had the sky here and then these other colours represent the colours of the fields. So for my, my plan for this week's video is to kind of move that idea forward in a, a bit more of a sophisticated way and with more of a finished painting. All right, so I'm going to try and keep my drawing nice and loose and gestural. But at the same time, my hope is to, you know, keep the proportions uh, of the animal, you know, reasonably accurate. So I've just started out with the right hand ear of the steer on the right. And then having added in the other ear, we can begin to include some of the structure of the head. Now, I don't want to you know, do too many details here because when I add the watercolour later, I want to you know, let that do its own thing to a certain extent. And with that in mind, really all I want is a fairly loose but descriptive outline. You know, a rough framework for me to add the watercolour to. And then hopefully, you know, things might go a little bit wild with the watercolour. It'll create some nice cauliflowers or edge effects. You know, we'll see what happens. But the idea is to create something which you know, I couldn't do by simply being super accurate with my drawing. So it's, it's meant to be a balance between having things pretty well proportioned and getting the lines, you know, pretty accurate. And then a little bit of sort of, you know, free flowing randomness, which I'm hoping the watercolour is going to introduce. So got a rough silhouette of the first animal down so now I can use a similar technique to begin to place the second uh, of the two steer and one of the things I think uh, you know is really cool about drawing cattle is the way they move and interact with, with each other because you know obviously they're herd animals and um, you know, they're always sort of peeking. They're either standing side by side or they're peeking out from behind each other or, you know, bustling one another, shoving one another to the side. So the patterns they make, um, you know, as, as a herd, they're always, you know, evolving and changing. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's far more interesting from my point of view than just drawing a single animal as much as I enjoy doing that, you know, fairly regularly. I've got the hind legs of this other of this first animal here. Oh no, hang on, no, that's not. No, sorry, the animal is so dark that it's actually uh, you're pretty immersed in immersed in shadow. So I think that's actually part of the chest of this second animal. And yeah, I think it is. And then that comes down here, and then the, the hind legs of the first animal kind of peek out around about there. And then the four legs of the second animal come down a bit lower. So 
or at least one of them does. One of them's there. And then we've got the other leg. Coming down here, let's go back to this one. OK, so we've got two cattle placed you know, on the paper. Um, now, the bottoms of the legs here are going to kind of disappear off frame, but I don't mind that when I'm painting animals. I like things to be... I don't want them to be too artificially posed, so it's almost as if these two cattle have just wandered into the frame of my painting. All right, well, you can see I've turned the painting, or the drawing at the moment, on its side. And... I'm going to, as mentioned earlier, explore this idea of having a landscape in the background turned on its side and then the animals the other way up. So I've got my watercolour palette here and I've got some cobalt blue, some magenta and some cadmium yellow. So let's get the just got the surface of the paper fairly moist and I've got a bit of water in the well here. This is a synthetic sable flat brush, which I haven't actually used before. Um, so we'll see how that works for, for the watercolour. And I'm just going to begin with a little bit of the cobalt blue. Let's put some of that on and see what happens. Now I'm working with the paper pretty much vertical. So that creates this lovely bead of colour which you can see kind of weeps into the pre-wetted area of the of the paper. Um, and I'm obviously going to get some trickles running across the drawing but I'm not too worried about those. I'm, I'm going to mop those up a bit later on. Um, and in addition because these animals are very very dark uh, I think you know the highlights are probably going to be darker than this background colour. But the other reason I've got the the paper vertical is I love the kind of the sort of granulation and running marks you get as the wash works its way down the page. And what I want to do is kind of see what that's going to look like as a background, you know, once things are turned 90 degrees. Um, so let's just wet that lower part of that wash a little bit there to keep it moving. And then I'm going to grab some more of the cobalt blue. There we go. And let's put a little bit of the magenta in this time. And I've put in way, way more than I intended there. So we'll grab a bit more of the blue. And, you know, there are a few clouds in the sky. It's a pretty cloudy sky in my reference. Let's just keep that wet. Um, so let's see what happens if we sort of suggest the presence of some, something, you know, a little bit of overcast weather in the sky here with this flat brush. So the other thing I can do is roll the brush like that, which is something I quite like doing for clouds and plant life. It creates some nice random textures, which are difficult to replicate in another way. Looks like I've got a stray hair there. There we go. Um, so let's uh, add a little bit more of that. And again, I don't want too many harsh kind of brush marks for this background. So again, I'll just let it kind of move a bit using the water spray. OK, now there are also some, you know, some distant trees. So let's make up a fairly cold green. So I'll take the colour I've got there and add a little bit of the yellow. So I've got a green there. but I want it to be a little bit cooler. So added a bit more of the blue. And again, keeping the paper nice and damp, let's add in some of 
some trees here. Now, in this case, I'm not going to deliberately go over the animal. Um, if the watercolour does kind of trickle across the, the legs here, that's OK. But um, OK, so that's probably enough for a background green. So let's go back to that yellow and add that back into the green here. And then we've got some uh, bushes and things which are closer, so they're going to be a warmer green. And, you know, quite clearly, I'm not copying my reference exactly here. It's just about creating a suggestion of a landscape in the background. But again, remember, this is going to be turned on its side relative to the animal. So I don't want that landscape in the background to be too distracting from the main animal. But at the same time, if somebody kind of spots it, I want them to be able to sort of see what it is. Now, there's a little bit of warmth in some of the bushes, kind of a, a reddish brown, orangey brown. So we'll put some of that in as well. Just a little patch. And I quite like these little gaps in the in the wash here, the little bits of white that are just peeking through. So very happy to leave those and not cover them up. And then there's some very, very, very pale grasses. So I'm just going to wash my brush out. And while I was doing that, this little bead of colour here kind of broke away and trickled down through. So I think I'm just going to actually quite like that effect. And it's kind of gathering a little heavily around the, that line, which I don't want particularly. So I'm just going to tap that bead with the back end of the Sharpie just to let it help it do its own thing. Um, and I've got some pure cad yellow uh, on my palette now. So let's introduce some of that here. I'm just going to actually sweep that upwards now that I think about it. See what that does. And then finally, I want a, a warmer green for the left, for the what, what is currently the bottom of the painting. So coming back in with that yellow, a little touch of the cobalt blue. Let's get a little bit more of that. Keep the bottom of the painting nice and damp. Again, I'm going to work up from the bottom of frame. Just put a little bit more blue in there. Perhaps we'll actually mix it on the... There we go. It's going to be mostly yellow rather than a green, but never... Oh, that's a bit more greeny over there. It's a bit working a bit better. And again, I'm going right across the drawing here because um, the main thing I want is colour coming right up to the edge of the drawing for the most part. Um, and then, as I say, I'm going to come over with some darker pigments for the animals. Now, I'm very happy with the way the sky is behaving. I like what's going on here and here. Um, I might just add a little touch of... So this is my uh, overwash brush here, which I used for the first time the other week on the channel. So what I'm going to do is just see what happens if I take a little bit of pure magenta and just, I quite like what's happening there, so I'm not going to change that, but I'm just going to put a couple of little touches here and there on the, uh, the lower part of the painting. Just a little touch with the water. And I'm going to let that dry uh, and, and do its own thing now. You know, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, the background is pretty much dry now, so I'm going to start to work on the animals. 
and my plan in the first stages is to put a highlight wash on the two animals and then block in a shadow wash while that's still fairly damp. My hope being that that might create some, you know, some nice blooming effects with, within the watercolour. So it's going to be like a little bit of a stylized depiction of these two animals. So I've switched to my big round mop brush. Got some cobalt blue. Let's grab a little bit of the magenta. paint uh, in this central well. A bit more of that magenta. There we go. And now I need to try and control this wash a little better than before because um, you know I want to keep things fairly fairly well defined in terms of the animal's silhouette. But that said you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, as you can see, for the, what I'm doing at the moment is simply filling in the silhouette I've got, trusting my drawing. I'm not really checking my, my reference at all at the moment. I've just kind of made a decision that this will be the highlight colour. So, let's... Uh, now, where this over... Um, where, where I end up over painting some of the existing background colour, which is wandered to within the drawing, I'm going to get some kind of greens mixed in and, and all sorts of different colours. And that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind at all. Um, now let's uh, need a bit more paint, I think. Let's, uh, let's just wet the surface of the animals with a touch as well, just to you get a much more characterful wash, text, much more text, textured wash if you paint onto a wet surface. Now, that may not be what you want, of course, but uh, for me today, um, it very much is. So so. As I do with my acrylic paintings, I'm just, you know, putting a few curved brush strokes in here to help make the torso of the animal look a little more 3D. Even at this early stage, it's worth doing that. Then we can move across to the to the other guy. And just to mix things up a little bit, I've changed my highlight colour. I've added a bit more magenta now. So let's just, you know, make the two animals a, a little bit distinct from one another by making the one on the left a little more, a little more purple. So that's creating a nice brown where I've overlaid that on the yellow background. So that's kind of cool to remember for the future. Uh, I'm just going to go and grab some more of that blue. Now a split second after I turned the camera off, I, I also sprayed that other second animal with some water, as you can see there. Um, and that was simply to get that wash moving so that's why that textured pattern has suddenly appeared i'm just uh, putting in a little bit of a wash there in blue just a, a bit on that first animal that i've missed okay so now we are in a situation where i've got actually got some blue to hand on my palette here that's always a good place to be having enough paint and um, what i'm going to do is mix up a darker colour now. Get a 
bit more of the magenta. I'm going with more or less the same colour scheme at this stage, I think. So that's quite a bit darker. It's a, it's a nice purple. I don't want to put it on too heavily. I still want it to be you know, fairly translucent. But what we're going to do is begin to introduce some shadow to this animal now. So that right ear is very much in shadow, as is the front of the, the nose and mouth there. Just a line of shadow here. On the left side of the face as well, left side of the head, and the ear as well. I'm just going to mist a little bit of water over there. I don't want it to go too crazy, but um, nevertheless, and I've just diluted the paint in the palette as well. And so now there's a quite a dramatic shadow coming down the front here. We can block in this whole area. A little bit of darkness along there, a little touch there. Again, keeping in mind the direction of the brush strokes. The legs here are really quite dark and in shadow, but these little bits of light kind of are still showing at the edges. That's OK. You know, there's probably going to be a bit of light catching there. It's a little bit darker here up on the hind quarters. And I think I'm going to leave that leg as it is for the moment. And then oh, I just got to let the cat out of the room. Hang on. Now for the left hand animal, I'm going to do a similar thing. I've grabbed what remains of that blue, but I'm going to put a bit more of the magenta in. Just as I did with the underlying wash. So I've actually gone really quite purpley. And then, and then we can do a similar thing. So this ear is dark. And then a little bit of darkness there. Again, front and, front and bottom of the nose. There's a line of shadow there, up here there as well. That strayed inadvertently onto the first animal and I don't want that so lifted that bit off with my finger and then again we look at the cast shadow coming down the body. So the ear casts kind of a nice little shadow there and then it's really all, all quite dark down here. And along the front of this leg Bit of shadow up in there. That leg's in deep shadow. It's kind of dark in there as well. Left side of this foreleg is pretty dark. And the shadow extends you know, a good way down the leg, but not all the way to the bottom. So I've left that bit un uncoated. And it's pretty dark there. And then this is going to be pretty cool for a, a cast shadow colour as well, actually. So let's uh, let's put a little indication of a cast shadow for the first animal there, which actually extends back through there and then the main the, the left hand animal here as well little cast shadow and then let's just get the surface of the painting a little bit damp over here because there is some darkness along the top of the back here but I want that, that paint to kind of move a little more than I did than what I have going on before. So everything's still going OK for the moment. Let's put a bit of shadow in here.
Now, the only thing I don't like so far is this kind of little drip, which is, uh, oh, I've just hit it by mistake, but um, so let's uh, let's move move that drip into something a little more cow-like, or steer-like, as I should say. And we'll add a few little touches there. All right, well, I'm just going to mist the, uh, the surface of the painting again with a little bit of water, just so that it doesn't dry out too completely. And I'm going to try and do a little bit of more detailed work and enhance the contrast a little bit as well. So I'm grabbing some more cobalt blue. I'm going to stick with my large brush just for now. Um, grab some of the magenta. So I've got a nice strong purple. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt umber mix that in with what's left of the purple in the well so I've got kind of a more of a neutral shadow color now you know I don't want to kill the vibrancy of the color I've got going completely but I do want to deepen some of these shadows a bit so let's put a little patch of darkness on the ear there and on the left side of the head and then and it's almost impossible to see the eye in my reference so, you know it's it's in such deep shadow but i'm just going to leave a little gap for the eye there that i will come back to later and then similarly on the right here there is a shadow under the brow but i've left enough pale color to allow me to work into that later Dark spot there in the centre of the nose. Over on the right. And then very deep shadow down here. I just want to lift off some of that darker wash that I've put down. So I'm grabbing my uh, flat again and uh, just pop the, the brush there. I just want to lift off some of that. And while I've got that on my brush, I'm going to use that to just darken some of this area just a little bit and then the purple of that left one is kind of running down the face a little more than I want so Sticking with the flat brush for the moment, I think, we're just going to so, um, subdue some of the, these highlights because they're a little too bright now in some areas. Leave little patches showing where things are a little brighter. And again, we can darken that shadow. So I've just switched to the flat brush because I'm finding it just... I don't know, it just seems to work quite well for what I'm trying to do here at the moment. Let's just make all of this a bit more of a coherent tone. 
then I'll come in in just a second and darken some of that quite dramatically. Now, while I've been chatting away, I hadn't noticed that drip. So definitely want to lose that. So let's just do that. And then hopefully if I'm quick enough with the paper towel. managed to catch the worst of that but on the whole I'm quite happy with the right hand animal now um, although it's got some weird drips going on here which are kind of interesting but I don't know that they're quite what I want but let's go over to the left hand guy and we'll, we'll let this one do what its thing and then we'll see what happens well I've mixed up another dark tone but this has got more same three colors but it's got more of the magenta and the uh, burnt umber in. I'm going to come in with the flat brush this time and see if we can re-establish um, some of these shadows and get a bit more depth of tone in what I currently have. And you know I'm painting into the underlying paint here it's still a little bit damp so I might get some weird cauliflower effects but as I mentioned earlier, I'm quite happy for that in this particular painting. I can just use the tips of the flat brush to introduce some little textural lines as well. And then I think what I'm going to do is go back to this first one and just soften and blend out some of those runs which occurred. I quite like the edge of this shadow but I'm not so, quite so keen on, on that white uh, or that lighter part going down there so I'm just going to hide that keep the, the trickle going down the leg I'm happy with that let's put a few lines in here um, and again I'm going to let that dry now Well, I'm pretty happy with the animal on the right here. There's still some work to do with the one on the left, but let me just add a few little touches to the right hand animal. So I've switched to a small round brush and this is a mixture of the cobalt blue, the magenta and a bit of the burnt umber, but uh, I'm using this straight out of the tube now. so not diluted at all. So I'm just putting in a more refined indication of the eye on you know for both uh, rather than just leaving those sort of blank soulless uh, windows that I had previously. And then I'm going to grab a bit more of the burnt umber and the magenta. Let's go a bit more. And the blue, in fact, as I'm working it out. Um, so it's more or less the same colour, actually. And what I'm going to do is use this for the nostrils. So...
It's quite a strong shadow under the upper edge of that nostril and also the one on the left. And then we'll put, just strengthen the shadow under the lips there a little bit. Uh, and that's probably all I'm going to do for that animal, I think. So let's go over to this one on the left. OK, so I'm going to start in a similar way with my adjustments for the one on the left. So, for example, I'm going to... Put in a nostril here on the right of the nose and also just refine the little patch of shadow that I had from earlier on the left. And then I think I can also you know, add a line in there to kind of just make the shape of the jaw a little bit better as well. I mean, obviously, I'm not going for a realistic depiction here. So it's all about choosing which bits of info to include. Then we can put an eye in on the right. So put, we'll put the little eyelash in there. And then we've got an eye. And then we need to do something similar on the left hand side. But again, it's very much in shadow, but nevertheless, it, you know, it needs to be there. OK, so we've got uh, eyes and nostrils. So now I just want to I think I'm going to give this animal on the left a dry brush treatment, both in terms of shadow and well, maybe not for the shadow, actually, but certainly for the highlights. So I think I'm going to add some deeper shadows to begin with on this one on the left. Actually, on sort of third thoughts, I think I'm going to try a sort of pseudo dry brush um, for both shadow and highlights. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So I've got um, another mix of that purple, but with more of the magenta in. And uh, back to my flat brush. And I quite like that already. So we'll, we'll persevere and see where we end up. Because it might be quite a nice contrast of textures to have the animal on the left painted in the way I'm doing it now. And then the one on the right with that rather looser, more kind of flowy treatment. So by being a little bit more precise um, with this one on the left, I can kind of refine the, the, you know, the structure of the muscles and things like that in a way that's a little, a little trickier to do if you're doing it with the washes. But even though I'm dry brushing on paint, which is more or less straight out of the tube, um, it's still transparent enough that um, you know the work I've done underneath that's still going to show through so you still in a way you're sort of getting the best of both worlds hopefully
All right, well, I've actually just switched to my interactive acrylics. Got my little filbert brush here, titanium white, cerulean blue, mixed up a pale blue. Going to use this to just put in some final highlights on this right hand animal, where the, the light's really catching the nose quite brightly. a little bit there as well but apart from that I think I'm going to leave leave that guy now on the on the um, left hand animal similar thing on the nostril a little bit of light there just gonna even though it's not quite like this I'm just going to use the same blue just to pick out the line of the nose there a little more and adding a little bit more of the blue to that same mixture just going to use that to put in a few little highlights on this left hand animal just to soften some of these drawing lines that are still showing you know I, I don't mind that the, the drawing is showing that was kind of the idea all along really but um, I just feel I can improve the final image by adding some some extra bits of blue to, to this guy on the on the left I'm just switching to a half inch flat brush now. I'm going to just drag across. Just need to load the brush up a bit more. Just going to dry brush across some of this blue to get a little bit more sheen on the coat. So here's a look at the finished painting and you can see I've added a little bit of detail onto the eye of the right hand animal. If we look at the body then you can see how great watercolour is for creating these really interesting textural washes but still having a sense of form on the animal's trunk or torso and then the addition of the acrylic blue highlights on the left hand steer I've really kind of brought that one to life as well. So I'm going to call this painting Welcome to the Edge because the idea is that I've got this kind of abstract landscape turned on its side. So I've got the sky on the right and all the foliage and hedges and things on the left. And the two are kind of bleeding into each other. And then these animals have somehow existed or live at 90 degrees to that landscape and they've kind of walked to the edge of reality almost.